come with me today as we explore Copenhagen, Denmark. Normally I avoid cruise line excursions, especially in Europe where they're really expensive, but I decided to do one on this particular sailing in Copenhagen because I wanted to go to a location that is a little far out from port which is one of the area's biggest attractions, the Viking Ship Museum, which is located in nearby Roskilde, which is about 25 miles west of Copenhagen, about a 45 minute ride by bus. It was a beautiful drive and we enjoyed seeing Copenhagen's landscape and we stopped at a local church and village in Roskilde, which is really cool. Now, if you wanna stay close to port and you don't wanna venture out or pay for an excursion, there are some things to do in the city center. Copenhagen city center is not walkable from port. It is about six miles, so you will have to take transportation. I sailed on Holland America Line and they offered cruisers a shuttle service from the pier for about $20 per person for unlimited use with the shuttle running approximately every 30 minutes. Like many other major European cruise port destinations, there is a hop on hop off bus option that you can buy which takes you to all of the major tourist sites. Now, some of the top things to do in Copenhagen include the Little Mermaid statue, Tivoli Gardens, Nyhaven, which is Copenhagen's famous 17th century waterfront, Rosenberg Castle, which is about three miles from the cruise port, and the National Museum of Denmark. Now, as I mentioned, we really wanted to see the Viking Ship Museum as we were big fans of Viking culture and history, and it was worth the cost of the excursion and the distance there and back. This is a renowned cultural attraction that showcases five original, yes, original restored Viking ships from the 11th century. They're known as the Skoldelev ships and they were excavated from the Roskild Fjord in the 1960s. I found it completely fascinating to see actual ship remnants and to learn more about Viking history. The museum even has a replica shipyard located outside, which was really neat. And while we didn't love the long bus ride to and from the museum, as I mentioned, it was really worth it, especially because we did get that quick stop at the Roskilde Cathedral and church, which gave us a glimpse of the quaint side of Denmark instead of just the bustling city center of Copenhagen. Now, like many European cruise port destinations, the weather can be erratic. The day started out beautiful, but it ended up in torrential rain. So always make sure you bring a light hooded jacket and possibly even an umbrella. The official language of Copenhagen and the entire country of Denmark is Danish, although many residents, especially in the touristic areas, speak English. During our visit, all of the vendors we interacted with were fluent in English. Now this one's tricky because the official currency in Denmark is the Danish krona, whereas most of our other ports of call use the euro. I did find that most of the vendors did take euros here, but what is pretty standard and commonplace and universal in Europe is contactless credit cards. So we just did that. So it's not essential to convert your currency. Euros and credit cards will be just fine. 